Poza rządem. Program o organizacjach pozarządowych. Radio Pryzmat. Radio w internecie. Good evening. My name is Martina and you are listening to Prismat Radio. Our topic of volunteering is continuing one last time. You already heard about volunteering from a perspective of foreign volunteers who are staying here in Krakow for nine months. And now you will hear a final word. And welcome back. That was Crazy Glue by Melanie Ungar and So in Love by Plex. And now we are back in the studio. Me and all the other volunteers that you hear here are a part of an EVS project here in Krakow with our association stream, Youth Development and Integration Association. Our project is unfortunately finishing very soon, in three weeks, but we had a lot of fun. We learned a lot and I think this was an important experience for everyone. So let's summarize our project a little bit. We arrived here on 1st of October last year. We met each other, our mentors, assistants, coordinators. We did some workshops. We had our arrival trainings in Warsaw. We got used to the work. We celebrated Christmas and New Year's. Had our midterm training in Torun and came back to Krakow to continue the project. And now we are here. In the meantime, we traveled through Poland and Europe. We went to concerts, exhibitions. We met some new friends. We partied. We ate a lot of delicious Polish food and, of course, much more. But today, to help me talk about this topic, I have two guests. So, hello, guys, and welcome. Hello. hello. Uh, so, first, maybe I will ask you just to introduce yourselves and tell us uh, where are you volunteering? So, my name is Javi. I'm from Spain, and I'm volunteering here in Krakow, of course, uh, in kindergarten number 38. Uh, it's uh, close to, I mean, we, we would say it's close to Bronowice Viaduct. And I'm volunteering in the kindergarten with a group of students from three to four years old. Okay, and you? I am Francesco from Italy, and I'm working as a volunteer in the public library on Rajska, which apparently everybody knows, because it's huge, and it's also the biggest one of Małopolska, I guess, or something like that. And I'm working there uh, as a language teacher, mostly. Sometimes I help the librarians, but mostly language teacher. And tell me, why did you decide to do EVS? What motivated you? Why did you apply? I just wanted to leave Italy, which very. is a very basic answer, I guess. It's maybe not exciting, but I really needed to to leave, to do something else, to be somewhere else, with someone else. It was a combination of those things. And also, I knew it was going to be very cool. For me, I think it's a bit different from what we you have here in other programs because my situation is a bit different. I came here to Krakow before I joined EVS because of my girlfriend. Uh, she moved here from Spain, so I moved after her. At, after her, and after maybe two or three weeks, I met some of the volunteers from Stream, and they talked to me about this project. There was a free position, and I said, "Why not? It's like the great opportunity that comes to me." I'm not going to let it pass, and that's why I joined EVS, and I'm not re regretting it at all. Yeah, I was just going to ask you if you regret the decision or if you are happy with it, and also, Francesco, you had a really simple reason for coming here, but uh, can you say that this EVS project kind of uh, gave you different expectations or it offered more than you expected? Mm, maybe... Maybe yes, because to be honest, I didn't know what to expect. Like some things, yeah, sure. I was expecting to live in a foreign country, and this means already a lot of things. I was expecting to have a job that at the beginning would have been difficult, which it was, by the way, for me at least. But maybe I was not expecting so many people, so many, so much cultural exchange. Like so, I I got more of what I expected, but. My expectations were a bit weird, maybe, because they were all over the place. And for, you, Javier? For me, at some point, it's similar to what Francesco said, because I didn't have the time to create an expect expectation of the EVS, so everything came all of a sudden. And definitely, it's really, really good, because uh, my previous experience as a teacher 
could be like uh, go further with this experience in a different way, not with the pressure of having to do things every single day, just to take in a second position and creating your own activities or just doing things in the kindergarten. That's really good. And maybe now just to make it clear for our listeners, can you tell us what do you do in a day uh, during your work? What does your standard working day looks like? Okay. Uh, I start at nine in the kindergarten. I join the other two volunteers at my kindergarten, and uh, we join. It's one of us, the the group of students we are working with. Um, in a normal day, we can just start um, doing the activities with the children, like normal activities. We talk with the, the teachers there in the kindergarten. We help them with daily activities, and also we have some time to prepare our own activities, like freely, and that's really good because we can approach them to our cultures, do activities we always wanted to do, do something funny with children, like escaping from routine. Sounds really good and really fun. For me, it's uh, sometimes a little bit more complicated because the project in the library is mm, structured, structured differently than kindergarten project. Like, for example, we have two semesters, kind of, and we switch from one building to another which in our case means basically almost changing everything because first part uh, I had two lessons per week so I was going to work every day but one time one day per week I was working helping the librarians at the desk so if you came to Arteteca and you saw a guy with long hair saying Przepraszam and something like that it was me people noticed me at some point And but aside from that single day, I was just preparing my lessons and sometimes sleeping in Arteteca actually, but uh, well, a little bit. It's a very cozy uh, place sometimes in the winter. But when the switch happens and you go to the other building, it's kind of where you work for real, you can say. So my routine now, my daily routine is to go back, go uh, at work at nine. Basically, I have always at least one hour to do something if I have to to finish preparing my lessons and then one or two lessons per day I have so maybe I finish at 11 maybe I finish at 12:30, and from there I can keep preparing lessons for the day after or not because we can actually manage ourselves very freely in the library. So your projects are actually very different you even have uh, different uh, groups that your project is aiming to Uh, and your daily activities are different. Um, but can you tell me what is your favorite thing about the work you do here? Okay, in my case, I really like uh, doing the activities with children because I, I have the possibility of improvising in my day, daily life with the children and that's really good because you don't know what you are able to do until you feel free to do whatever comes to your mind first and that's really good because some maybe it sounds a bit scary that you would not do what you are supposed to do but in the end with the help of the teachers and the other volunteers you come up with great ideas that you had never expected you to do and that's like the most uh, important thing for me i enjoyed it a lot i really really like when a lesson really works really work like um let's say you came up with a good topic a good subject for the lesson you managed to explain it well but also you managed to be a bit funny and because the students know you at some point you joke with them and they joke with you and i remember we had some times in which we spent basically one hour laughing because all the time someone was cracking some joke or or i was doing it most of the time it's me but also like the lesson was working i could see that they were not maybe not learning immediately but they were understanding things and they were taking notes so it, it was working very well and those moments are very very nice especially when they laugh all together it's like wow well it's really nice to hear that you feel accomplished uh, at your workplaces um so that was your favorite thing about your work but what is your favorite thing about Krakow about this beautiful city where we are staying I love the, t the city itself. Uh, it feels like a small atmosphere that it's not connected to the rest of Poland at some point because you have such a mixture of uh, cultures that it it doesn't really feel like you are in a, in a specific country. You are like in the middle of Europe or in the middle of the world just with 
things to do. You can choose going party, you can choose just relaxing in a library cafe, you can just choose whatever you want. And that's what I like the most about the of, about Krakow, the atmosphere. Even if the winter is a bit long and <laughs> dark, but when summer or spring even comes this year specifically, you can just go out, sit next to the Viswa, talk with friends, meet new people. That's what I like the most, like the international experience of it. You know, sometimes, because I agree a lot with this, sometimes it happens for me, to me, for real, I forget I am in Poland. Because mostly we don't hang out a lot with Polish people, which is not a good thing. But it happens to have those parties in which there is no Poles at all. There are no Poles. And sometimes I'm like, yeah, I'm just with my friends. And then I get out of the apartment, it's like, oh yeah, it's Poland. But if there is another thing that I really like a lot, which is a maybe sillier thing. Here they have night buses and night trams. In my city they don't have it. And for me it was always such a big problem, really. I always had to come back either, either by walking or not coming back at all. Here it's so good. I can do whatever I want. It's a small thing, but it's very important for me. Yeah, I also really, really like the whole city everything everything about it and like you said the winter is long and it can be dark and pretty harsh uh, with below zero temperatures but the city is really beautiful and it has everything whenever you want to do something you can always do it and i also feel like we are a little bit in our international bubble here <laughs> because we are always communicating either in english or in some other language that mm -hmm. we speak uh, and even though i i am in contact with polish people Uh, almost every day uh, I do feel this strong international atmosphere not just with my friends and other volunteers here but also in the whole Krakow because of all the tourists and all the foreigners working here or just traveling staying for some time but I really like it and maybe one of my favorite things is uh, that I can still walk even after eight months I can walk through the city and I see no familiar faces, I feel like a complete stranger, and I love it. I really love it. it I think it gives um, a different sense of freedom that you really can't have in your own country, in your own city, uh, where you were growing up your whole life. Yeah. That happened as well in my hometown, it's really small. And it's not only about seeing familiar faces, it's just about the gossips around the people. It's, <laughs> it doesn't mean that you have done something bad or something, it's just Whatever happens in your life, everybody knows. And here in Krakow, it's like, you are free to do whatever, that nobody cares. It's just your thing. Yeah. I like to recognize people sometimes. Well... I, and yeah, no, I know what you mean, but just... For me, it's very nice, finally, after some time here, I just go in the street and it's like, oh, look, I know that person. Oh, look, I remember that guy. Like, before coming here, while I was waiting for the tram, I think I met one of the kids that comes to my lesson, for example. It was waiting for the tram, eating his pizza. I winked at him because I was not sure it was him, so I didn't want to say hello. So, and I really like that, more than not recognizing anybody. Hmm. Yeah, well, it's a, a different feeling and a different yeah, sure. uh, atmosphere. But I, I really, I found myself walking home one day uh, and I really felt like a stranger, but not in a bad way, in a very, very good way, and I really loved it. We are back in Radio Prisma studio and we are continuing with our topic. Uh, I have two volunteers here with me for all of you who are just joining us now. We have Javier from Spain and Francesco from Italy. And we are talking about our project, what we did so far and about our experiences and about our views on everything that happened. Uh, so guys, tell me, what was the biggest challenge for you here? Do you mean in general, in Poland? You can say in general in Poland, also maybe in the project. For me, um, it was at first when I was facing like Polish language and I was, it was just like a mixture of sounds coming into my ears. It's not even words, it was just sounds, like, I don't know, super different to Spanish. Now I'm not, not even close to communicating Polish, but at least when they are talking to me, I can understand the topic, what if it's something good, something bad. And that's really good that you feel that you are not able to communicate, but you feel as well the progress of uh, learning a language. If I had studied more, I have to recognize I, I would have come farther in that uh, field. 
but I will manage. So now you are in a kind of uh, phase where you can understand something is happening and if it's good or bad, but not quite what is happening exactly. Uh, yeah, for example, I heard, I can hear the song Piesek, and I know it's about a dog. Maybe at the beginning of the AVS, I was like, they might be talking about a uh, computer or the whatever. And that was uh, like, not stressing, but you were in your own bubble, for example, in the tram. You were just alone. Uh, surrounded for, by a bunch of police people around and now you are like okay maybe they are people as well like talking in not uh, in a figure figuring out the the language actually i had a really funny thing that happened to me because when we are here i mean when i'm here and i'm taking a tram you know i just sit or i stand and that, that's it i'm minding my own business i can't really listen to other people talking if it's not english or spanish or something um And I'm just, you know, standing there, going my own way, and that's it. I don't really have a lot of contact with people around me, and I just look through the window, and, and, and that's it. And even if I'm sitting down and I see an old lady or, you know, an old man, I always get up and I give them my seat, and I don't usually say anything, mm -hmm. even though I could probably say something in Polish, but I just, I get up and I sit down, and that's it. And then I was home also in a tram and I realized that I did the exactly same thing I was just sitting there yeah. I disconnected even though I could understand everything that people were saying of course but I was just sitting in my tram looking through the window not communicating with anyone and then I also gave my seat to someone and I also didn't say anything when I could you know I have a nice chance to say something to the person that I'm giving my seat to but no I just got up and I, w I, I kept quiet And after a few minutes, I realized what happened, and I laughed a little bit with myself and at myself at the same time, because it was just the kind of habit that I uh, developed here. Uh, and I didn't really have to keep it when I was home, but I, I did. And I did, didn't mind it, actually. It was okay for me. For me, in the public transport is like... I'm not communicating with people, even if I spoke in Polish, I think I wouldn't talk to a stranger just because of talking. But sometimes when I'm not too lazy, I just try to pay attention what they are talking about and it's some kind of challenge. Like, <laughs> what are these two strangers talking about? I try to figure out and that's a thing, like, makes me, makes my mind be active at all time. And then you notice that the two strangers are actually Spanish and you are understanding oh, every that single That happens word so often. <laughs> it, yeah. It happens. So mm, often. Yeah, for me the challenge was, I had two, like, that was the question, right? Two challenges. Yes. yes. One was the language, but not Polish, English. Because um, I came here not knowing Polish, of course, and I thought that's normal, that's the way it is. Nobody expects me to know Polish. And of course. Nobody expects me to learn very fast because everybody knows it's not so easy. So I was fine with it. I was just unsure about my English before coming because this is the first time in my life that I have to live on the back of that. Like, I, I always knew English, kind of, but I never had to speak it, like, on a daily basis. So now I know I can, but before coming I was like, how will it be? Uh, I had a few doubts about that. And also the other challenge was to actually do my job because that was another thing I was very, very unsure about. Because teaching, I had no education, I had no ideas on how to do it. And even if you try to, to read something, even if you try to understand how to do it, um, until you do it, actually, it's very different. Like, you don't have the, the idea. And even when you start, you start maybe not in the best way. I remember my first lesson, they were a mess. Nothing was working, and I was like... I had one hour and a half of lesson and one hour of material and I had to improvise very badly for 30 minutes and many things were not working very well. Then, of course, it started working like every job. At the beginning, maybe you don't really know and after a while it's like, oh yeah, I can do this. Oh yeah, I know how to do that. Oh yeah, I know how to improvise. Thank God, now I know. And so the challenge were overcome, came I guess. They say that with uh, experience and knowledge comes creativity. <coughs> so maybe that's exactly what happened to you. Because actually Sofia, uh, other volunteer who is also working in the library giving uh, language lessons, she said the same. That at first it was really hard to prepare you because she said, oh, I need to prepare every minute yeah, yeah. of every lesson. And now I don't have to. I know what yeah. I want to do. I prepare just the most important parts and everything else goes 
smoothly yeah. Yeah. and it's fine so I think it's really just a matter of experience at this point and it's great that you can see the progress oh yeah they are huge in this regard huge so it's it's great for both of you um, now I have a question that is kind of connected to what we just talked about um, what do you think that you learned here what's the the big thing that you feel like you learned not maybe just from the project but also from the environment that we are in uh, from the people around you from uh, people you are working with in your hosting organizations okay for me it's the same situation as Francesco it's the first time I'm living abroad the first time I have to really live on my own because yeah in Spain I was living alone not in my parents place anymore but in the end you have a close connection with them and if something happens you always have them in your back so here it was more like a not challenge but trying to do your th the things as you have to do them because there's nobody behind you to help you in a way a parent would so you have to solve your own problems find uh, like your own resources to solve them and that's the thing that I've learned the most I think that everybody does it at some point in their life but for me it was clearly this year because it was like a brand new experience that I had to manage by myself. I think it's uh, the process of becoming an adult yeah. when you actually have to do things by yourself. Um, but I also think that when you, when you do that, when you go abroad, that it happens in maybe a faster way or more intense way. Because even if you're in your own country in another city, away from family, it's still not so far away. You can still manage to call them or you know something but if you are here and they are in Spain they can't really help you with something that is happening right now uh, or a anywhere else not just in Spain mm -hmm. um, so I, I believe you when you say that it was an important um, thing that happened for, for you here yeah, it's like I felt I was independent but I hadn't proved yet that I was independent so this year it was like the moment I really had to prove myself that I was that way. Yeah, I feel the same. So, because after eight months now, nine very soon, y you will be able to go back if you want, just maybe for a vacation and say like, yeah, you know, this is the way I manage my home. Uh, this is the way I manage my money. Like, this is how I did it. And maybe you will notice that your parents maybe always did it differently. And it can be like, you know, actually before, I couldn't say anything because before it was like okay I'm also here I am being managed too I am part of that now I can be like I would not do it that way that's not how I do it because now I am more of a person I'm less of something of someone being managed so it's like now I I say that nice <clears throat> yeah it's it's big I mean I, I I lived before on my own but I was still in my country so it's different it's always different you can say that it's the same but actually it's different when you have other country and other language and different culture culture around you um, now I would like to ask you to try to look back uh, from the beginning of our project until now everything we did everything we saw everything we experienced um, what is maybe the most uh, intense memory for you or maybe accept this um, Growing up, becoming an adult, what would be uh, the thing where you see the biggest change? Uh, was it um, some kind of change of priorities in your life? Is it something... What, what do you think? Because eight months is not such a short amount of time to be in a foreign country, in, uh, in a place where you are doing something else that you don't usually do, talking to people you don't usually talk to. So I think that something could happen so big and uh, so if you could maybe share some maybe not the most intense memory but something that stayed with you for a longer time but it can be positive or negative right it can be both yes for me it's about mm, people leaving the project like one in particular of course and when that person left for me it was very bad so it's a very intense moment for sure I don't know if it made me grow up, maybe, I assume it did, And but yeah, that was super intense, I could say. Well, I think that 
always uh, when people are leaving on the, or even when we are leaving some place that we really like or people that we really like it's always uh, yeah. a, something big and it always uh, can leave uh, some kind of mark I think it never happened to me this way just because living always in my hometown living always with my friends sure there are friends that I don't see anymore now but it always happened like gradually well it happened something very similar to this also but I don't know I felt it differently here maybe because I was abroad maybe I still am maybe because of everything is different but this time struck me in a different way than other times I feel so and that was We Just Be by Mickey Blue and Harvey Smekanse we are back in Radio Prisma studio and we are continuing with our topic uh, I have two volunteers here with me for all of you who are just joining us now we have Javier from Spain and Francesco from Italy and we are talking about our project what we did so far and about our experiences and about our views on everything that happened uh, so guys, tell me, what was the biggest challenge for you here? Do you mean in general, in Poland? You can say in general in Poland, also maybe in the project. For me, um, it was at first when I was facing like Polish language and I was, it was just like a mixture of sounds coming into my ears. It's not even words, it was just sounds, like, I don't know, super different to Spanish. Now I'm not not even close to communicating Polish, but at least when they are talking to me, I can understand the topic, What if it's something good, something bad. And that's really good, that you feel that you are not able to communicate, but you feel as well the progress of uh, learning a language. If I had studied more, I have to recognize, I, I would have come farther in that uh, field, but I will manage. So now you're in a kind of uh, phase where you can understand something is happening and if it's good or bad, but not quite what is happening exactly. Uh, yeah, for example, I heard, I can hear the song Piesek and I know it's about a dog. Maybe at the beginning of the EVS I was like, they might be talking about a uh, computer or the whatever. And that was uh, like, not stressing, but you were in your own bubble, for example, in the tram. You were just alone. Uh, surrounded for, by a bunch of Polish people around and now you are like, okay, maybe they are people as well, like talking in, not uh, in a figure, figuring out the, the language. Actually, I had a really funny thing that happened to me because when we are here, I mean, when I'm here and I'm taking a tram, you know, I just sit or I stand and that, that's it. I'm minding my own business. I can't really listen to other people talking if it's not English or Spanish or something. Um, and I'm just, you know, standing there, going my own way, and that's it. I don't really have a lot of contact with people around me, and I just look through the window, and, and, and that's it. And even if I'm sitting down and I see an old lady or, you know, an old man, I always get up and I give them my seat, and I don't usually say anything, mm -hmm. even though I could probably say something in Polish, but I just, I get up and I sit down, and that's it. And then I was home also in a tram, and I realized that I did the exactly same thing. I was just sitting there, I disconnected, even though I could understand everything that people were saying, of course, but I was just sitting in my tram, looking through the window, not communicating with anyone, and then I also gave my seat to someone, and I also didn't say anything. When I could, you know, I have a nice chance to say something to the person that I'm giving my seat to, but no, I just got up and I, w I, I kept quiet. And after a few minutes, I realized what happened, and I laughed a little bit with myself and at myself at the same time, because it was just the kind of habit that I uh, developed here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't really have to keep it when I was home, but I, I did. And I did, didn't mind it, actually. It was okay for me. For me, in the public transport is like... I'm not communicating with people, even if I spoke in Polish, I think I wouldn't talk to a stranger just because of talking. But sometimes when I'm not too lazy, I just try to pay attention to what they are talking about and it's some kind of challenge. Like, <laughs> what are these two strangers talking about? I try to figure out and that's a thing, like, makes me, makes my mind be active at all time. And then you notice that the two strangers are actually Spanish and you are understanding oh, every that single happens word so because often. <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> it happens so mm, often yeah for me the challenge was I had two like that was the question right two challenges yes, yes. one was the language but not Polish English because um, I came here not knowing Polish of course 
and I thought that's normal, that's the way it is. Nobody expects me to know Polish, of and course. nobody expects me to learn very fast because everybody knows it's not so easy. So I was fine with it. I was just unsure about my English before coming because this is the first time in my life that I have to live on the back of that. Like, I, I always knew English, kinda, but I never had to speak it like on a daily basis. So now I know I can, but before coming I was like, how will it be? Uh, I had a few doubts about that. And also the other challenge was to actually do my job, because that was another thing I was very, very unsure about. Because teaching, I had no education, I had no ideas on how to do it. And even if you try to, to read something, even if you try to understand how to do it, um, until you do it, actually, it's very different. Like, you don't have the, the idea. And even when you start, you start maybe not in the best way. I remember my first lesson, they were a mess. Nothing was working, and I was like, I had one hour and a half of lesson and one hour of material, and I had to improvise very badly for 30 minutes, and many things were not working very well. Then, of course, it started working, like every job. At the beginning, maybe you don't really know, and after a while, it's like, oh, yeah, I can do this. Oh, yeah, I know how to do that. Oh, yeah, I know how to improvise. Thank God, now I know. And so the challenge were overcome, came, I guess. They say that with uh, experience and knowledge comes creativity. <coughs> so maybe that's exactly what happened to you. Because actually Sofia, uh, other volunteer who is also working in a library giving uh, language lessons, she said the same. That at first it was really hard to prepare you because she said, oh, I need to prepare every minute yeah, yeah. of every lesson. And now I don't have to. I know what yeah. I want to do. I prepare just the most important parts and everything else goes smoothly yeah, yeah. and it's fine so I think it's really just a matter of experience at this point and it's great that you can see the progress oh yeah they are huge in this regard huge so it's it's great for both of you um, now I have a question that is kind of connected to what we just talked about um, what do you think that you learned here what's the the big thing that you feel like you learned not maybe just from the project, but also from the environment that we are in, uh, from the people around you, from uh, people you are working with in your hosting organizations. Okay, for me, it's the same situation as Francesco. It's the first time I'm living abroad. The first time I have to really live on my own. Because, yeah, in Spain I was living alone, not in my parents' place anymore. But in the end, you have a close connection with them. And if something happens, you always have them in your back. So here it was more like a, not challenge, but trying to do your th the things as you have to do them because there is nobody behind you to help you in a way a parent would. So you have to solve your own problems, find uh, like your own resources to solve them. And that's the thing that I've learned the most. I think that everybody does it at some point in their life, but for me it was clearly this year because it was like a brand new experience that I had to manage by myself. I think it's uh, the process of becoming an adult yeah. when you actually have to do things by yourself. Um, but I also think that when you when you do that, when you go abroad, that it happens in maybe a faster way or more intense way. Because even if you're in your own country in another city, away from family, it's still not so far away. You can still manage to call them or, you know, something. But if you are here and they are in Spain they can't really help you with something that is happening right now uh, or anywhere else, not just in Spain. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I believe you when you say that it was an important um, thing that happened for, for you here. Yes, yeah, like I felt I was independent, but I hadn't proved yet that I was independent. So this year it was like the moment I really had to prove myself that I was that way. Yeah, I feel the same. So, because uh, after eight months now, nine very soon, y you will be able to go back if you want, just maybe for a vacation, and say like, yeah, you know, this is the way I manage my home, uh, this is the way I manage my money, like, this is how I did it. And maybe you will notice that your parents maybe always did it differently. And it can be like, you know, actually before... I couldn't say anything. Bec before it was like, okay, I'm also here. I am being managed too. I am part of that. Now I can be like, I will not do it that way. That's not 
how I do it because now I am more of a person. I'm less of something of someone being managed. So it's like now I I say that. Nice. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's big. I mean, I, I I lived before on my own, but I was still in my country. So it's different. It's always different. You can say that it's the same, but actually it's different when you have other country and other language and different culture culture around you. Um Now I would like to ask you to try to look back uh, from the beginning of our project until now, everything we did, everything we saw, everything we experienced. Um, what is maybe the most uh, intense memory for you? Or maybe accept this um, growing up, becoming an adult, what would be uh, the thing where you see the biggest change? Uh, was it um, some kind of change of priorities in your life? Is it something? What What do you think? Because eight months is not such a short amount of time to be in a foreign country, in uh, in a place where you are doing something else that you don't usually do, talking to people you don't usually talk to. So I think that something could happen so big and... Uh, So if you could maybe share some, maybe not the most intense memory, but something that stayed with you for a longer time. But it can be positive or negative, right? It can be both, yes. <sighs> for me, it's about mm, people leaving the project. Like one in particular, of course. And when that person left, for me, it was very bad. So it's a very intense moment, for sure. I don't know if it made me grow up. Maybe I assume it did, and but yeah, that was super intense. I could say. Well, I think that one. always uh, when people are leaving, on the, or even when we are leaving, some place that we really like or people that we really like, it's always uh, yeah. a, something big, and it always uh, can leave uh, some kind of mark. I think it never happened to me this way. Just because living always in my hometown, living always with my friends. Sure, there are friends that I don't see anymore now. But it always happened, like, gradually. Well, it happened something very similar to this also, but I don't know, I felt it differently here. Maybe because I was abroad, maybe I still am. Maybe because of everything is different, but this time struck me in a different way than other times, I feel. So in the case, I think that it's not a change of, per of perspective because uh, I was already thinking of staying in Poland. It was so also just a certain point of this new experience, ma making things easier because I think that if you are doing an EVS, you have some things easier because you have the help of your organization that helps you with the accommodation, the medical insurance and so on. And that really makes things easier when you are looking for a job after EVS or looking for a place to stay after EVS because you get to know the city, you know better where to look, uh, you know better where to stay and so on. Because if you move to a foreign country and you don't have anything uh, beforehand, you just are in, you are in a rush of finding a new place to stay. And maybe it's a mistake in the end. It's not the best place. You are just willing to stay somewhere or willing to work somewhere and as I said EVS is a great opportunity of taking things calmer and doing it better. You also get to find contacts like you know people now after yeah. months of EVS it's not like you just came and you try to settle here it's like I know this one I know that one you know a lot of people actually after so many months you know volunteers that maybe are trying to stay you know volunteers that already are staying here after their EVS, you know your organization, a lot of people can help you, yeah. which is, yeah, it makes things ma very easier. Uh, for me, the change of perspective or of decision or whatever happened like in a big way, I guess, because now I want to stay here. And if you ask me one and a half year ago, would you like to go to live in Poland? No, no why should I? You know, I see no reason, but now living here, I see the reasons. And also, I think I'm doing better here than back at home. So, yeah, for me, it was like, okay, I actually like here. I actually enjoy a lot of things. I miss some others, but that's how it is. You will always miss something here or miss something there. So you just have to deal with it. And I, I now I feel like I, I want to stay. Yeah. 
I think that experience like EVS um, gives you an opportunity to see different way uh, into the world because even me when I was younger I thought that leaving the country where you were born in is not so easy and you know it doesn't just happen and you need a lot of time and a lot of, a lot of money and a lot of paperwork and a lot of everything but now I actually see that really it's not so hard if you want to move abroad, if you want to work, if you want to volunteer, if you want to um, take part in some project, it's really not so hard, especially if you want to stay within Europe and if you're a, a part of your like from a country that is a part of European Union. It's really, really uh, much easier now. I remember when my country went uh, got into European Union, people were not actually very happy with it um, for many different reasons. But actually I see now that things, some things like education and finding work are much easier than they were before. Um, and I'm grateful for, for that opportunity and I'm really grat grateful that I got to have this experience, this EVS in, in Krakow. And it definitely was an eye-opening experience for me in, in many ways. Um, so guys, is there something that you would like to add? Is there something you would like to say maybe to people who are thinking about uh, joining some project but they're not sure um, what what to tell them mm. okay as I see it it's like maybe moving to a foreign country looks like a big thing but in the end you will see that you won't be alone you won't be alone in the middle of nowhere without knowing anyone because you have a lot of people around you so if you are like interested in living the international experience just go for it EVS is a great opportunity for that uh, I don't know why people are, or why this EVS is so unknown compared to the regular Erasmus uh, grant, but in the end it's more or less the same thing. You are getting the help of uh, that, this grant and you are just going abroad and living with people who are doing the same thing as you are. So if you want to live abroad and or you regret not uh, doing it before, just go for it. I will say because of how EVS works, work, it's like mm, manage well how you choose your project because you can do a short one and then a long one or a long one. You cannot, you can have one year of EVS in your life maximum and that has some restrictions. I think I see people doing maybe a four months EVS and if you do a four months EVS then it's done. You cannot do anything else after that. And it comes down to personal decision and of course I cannot speak for everybody, I can only speak for myself, but I think that you kind of are wasting a big opportunity in doing a four month CVS. I, I wonder where is the rest? You, you could do more than that. And I think that most people, if they do such a short CVS, after they will think, I was really enjoying that. I wish it would be longer. Like for us, it has been nine months. It would be because still it's not over. But uh, I, I'm thinking it would be nicer if it still, if it was like one year. I would like to stay here more. I and agree. I think most, most volunteers at the end of their project they think this. But if you stay nine months or one year, you can be at least like, okay, I did the longest TVS I could, the longest that was available for me. But if you do like a shorter one, maybe you will regret it. So I think you should really manage this carefully. Uh, I would like to say that if you are living in Poland and if you think that it's impossible to go abroad and to do something, I, I'm telling you it's not. Um, you can even contact our organization because we are not just taking people in from other countries, we are also sending people away. And we are helping with everything from CVs to cover and motivational letters, um, everything. Really, uh, it, it's not so hard. You just need to Google a few things and you will know everything. That's, that's how I did it. And also, if you feel like, okay, maybe now you are studying or you are working and you feel like you want to do something else but not sure exactly what, you can always apply for some volunteering in your own, uh, in your own city, in your own village, in your own country. It, it's always a good um, opportunity to go volunteering somewhere, even if it's something just local, because you can really make an impact. You can really make a difference, change some things. 
Um, so if you feel like you want to do something, there are ways and there are projects and there are different things that you can do. And then if you feel like you want to go abroad, just go for it. Just like uh, the guy said, go for it. Make a nice research, research how to do it, uh, what are your options, um, who can help you, what you need to have, uh, how to apply. Maybe it seems a lot uh, right now before you start doing it, but you can see it's all very simple and there's no big problems for you doing it. Um, actually, before we finish, uh, I would like to tell you about a small project that uh, one of our volunteers is organizing. It's a German-Polish journalistic tandem with the topic connected to Jewish culture. The uh, project is open for Polish and German-speaking participants, so you should either speak Polish or, or speak German, not both, both is not necessary. Uh, you can be between 16 and 26 years old. Uh, the project starts on 24th of June and it finishes on 1st of July. And there will also be a link with more information under the radio post. So if you feel like uh, writing is something you like, if you would like to uh, learn more about different culture and to take part in a really, really cool project, uh, apply. There are still uh, some spaces available. I am sure you will not regret it. Um, okay, guys, now it's the time when we are finishing. So if you just want to add something, you can do it now. Or if you feel like you said it all. I just wanted to add, uh, in relation to the previous uh, question, that uh, the word volunteering for me before it was a bit unknown and it was related. I, I connected it to doing things people normally do for money, but without getting paid. So. I have to I have to say that that's not the thing in the end. I discovered that volunteering it doesn't mean carrying boxes from one place to the other or doing the, the work that other people don't want to do. Volunteering actually here under the EVS program is doing real things, doing things that make you feel accomplished. So yeah, I was just uh, wanting to add that. And I completely agree. Thank you. Yeah, me too. Um, Okay, we are at the end of this broadcast and just before we finish, don't forget that you can follow our organization stream on Facebook at Stream Association, also on Instagram at Stream-Association. Uh, you can also get a lot of information on our webpage, stream.org.pl. Thank you, Francesco. Thank you, Javier, for being here with us. Thank you for giving us all this wonderful information. Thank you, Agnieszka, for all the technical support, as always. Uh, and thank you all for listening to us. I'm saying goodbye with some more good music. This is BED by Cortez and Fire by Set Powers. Stay excellent.